The Return of Riel, Chapter 6. So, in this unit, we are going to look at Métis Rebellion number 2, the sequel. It stars five characters, well, four that we're going to look at. Lawrence Clark is the chief factor of the HBC. He's racist, anti-Métis, and he's going to spark a rebellion. Then we have Gabrielle Dumont, the leader of the Métis, who's going to have that showdown with Lawrence Clark over Métis rights. Then... We have William Van Horn, who's going to build a railroad, and that railroad's going to take troops all the way to that rebellion and squash it. Choo-choo! Finally, we have Louis Riel. He's the leader of the Métis, and he is going to rebel against the Canadian government. In the end, he's going to create two new provinces when he wakes up in the morning, and for that, he'll get hanged. All right, ready to go? And on to our next piece. Today... What we're going to look, back, look at is the three promises that were made to the Métis by the Canadian government, three in total. Then what we're going to do is look at script and what script is, and then the results of script and what happens to the Métis. We're also going to look at a nice little picture that I'm going to draw of what Métis farms look like, and you'll have to draw your own. Yay, Métis farms! Isn't this going to be fun? So let's go ahead and sketch our own. So of the three promises made to the Métis, number one was that French and English would be made both official languages in Manitoba. Yahoo! Le Yahoo! The second promise made to the Métis was that there would be two education systems, both Protestant and Catholic, because the Métis were Catholic and wanted to guarantee their rights. Also, they would be given 1.4 million acres, and that would be reserved for the Métis after the Manitoba Act. This would ensure they'd have their land. Below, you can see what a Manitoba farm system looks like. There's water below and strip patterns instead of large blocks. So please go ahead and sketch your own now. Wow, this journey's fun, but now let's look at scene three, the leading causes of the rebellion. Now, what we have to know about this little act is the laws of St. Lawrence, and the, that happened. First of all, Métis were allowed to hunt buffalo, but they were not allowed to hunt them out of season. A group of Métis went and killed a buffalo. And Lawrence Clark time, arrested them for doing so before the hunt had started. Gabrielle Dumont was a highly educated Métis. Now, what happened here in the laws of St. Lawrence? They were created to keep the bison from extinction. At this point, Métis had been hunting bison for years. If there is no bison, there is really no Métis. So the conflict that happens, in all of its glory, is that these rogue Métis hunt and kill those buffalo. They eventually are arrested before the season starts. Dumont's the one in charge of arresting them because he's the leader of the Métis. Clark, the jerk we talked about before, is famous, well, infamous anyways, and says, your arrest was not legal. What this meant is that the Métis had no rights, and they felt that they couldn't control their own people or do anything else. Indeed, what they decided to do was go and fight the government by calling in Louis Riel. So here's a look. Bang! Buffalo dead. Lawrence Clark arrests the person. The conflict starts over this Laws of the St. Lawrence, where we're trying to keep the bison. The rogue Métis hunt that buffalo. Clark says, you can't arrest them to Gabriel Dumont, and says that your arrest is not legal, which ends up resulting in that the Métis feel they have no rights to self-government, and so they're going to fight the Canadian government for their rights. So you've just heard about the infamous Clark. So let's Look at him in more detail. What are some things to know about him? Boo hiss. We hate Clark. Number one, he's the chief factor of Fort Carleton. Basically, he's the head of the HBC in the area. He's also a magistrate, which means he enforces the law. He's much like Judge Judy. He also hates the Métis. But you're probably asking, what's some proof? A. He says that they're inferior. Hmm. B. He pays them very little compared to white workers for the HBC as well. Pennies, indeed. Three, what he does is he never gives full-time contracts to the Métis. And number four, he calls them half-breeds, which is a very racist term. Hey, half-breed! And as a result, what are the Métis going to feel? Well, they're going to feel pretty sad and dejected. Aw, there's a sad Métis. Let's call him Métis Bob. Let's take another look at scene three. This is our chapter on cops, live on location with the incompetent members of the Northwest Mounted Police as they make their first journey into the Northwest. So the, the Northwest Mounted Police were based on the Irish Constabulary, and they had several goals. Number one, they were supposed to stop the liquor trade in the Northwest. Crimes and death were occurring. 
and Johnny McDonald thought if we base it on the Irish Constabulary, they'll have plenty of experience dealing with drunks. Number two, they were going to gain the confidence and respects of all of the native people living in the Northwest. Hey, here comes a Mountie. Thanks, Mountie. Number three, they were going to collect customs and duties and perform all of the duties of a police officer in the lawless Northwest. Uh-oh, they encountered some problems. One, their clothing. It was somewhat defective. Some of it was too short, some was too long, and the uniforms didn't always match or fit. The gun was also on the horse, placed in an awkward place that made it very hard to jump off. The trip itself. They couldn't ride horses, some of them. Some of them were under 16, and some of the horses died because they were grain eaters, and there was no grain available on the long journey. They had to be able to eat grass. And many men deserted. Oh, wait. Dessert spelled with one S, not two. And they had stomach problems. Let's just say bad stomach problems. Here's an outhouse with a mountie in it going eep. Wait a minute. They didn't have outhouses. They had trees. But the eep still remains. And the bonus, the tree got fertilized by the mounties. Number three. When they do finally arrive at Fort Whoopup to look for the whiskey traders, they'd been tipped off and all of the whiskey traders had fled back across the American border. Here's Fort Whoopup. And, of course, it was known because the name Whoopup for having whiskey. But whiskey here for the Mounties meant no whiskey here. In fact, free whiskey ended up very quickly being whiskey-free for that particular fort. Next, what we're going to do is look at the Northwest Mounted Police um, and what they were fighting. And they were fighting fire water, which is another way of saying liquor, almost 100% pure alcohol, which was killing the natives. And that is a look at the pig-headed Northwest Mounted Police. Perhaps that's where the term comes from. So just to reiterate, for those of you that are slow, like me or members of the NWNP, first, their goals were to stop the liquor trade in the Northwest, Second, they wanted to gain the confidence and respect of natives. Third, they wanted to collect customs and duties and act as police officers. But they did encounter problems on the way. First, their clothing didn't fit. Second, the trip was difficult because of the horses. And third, the whiskey traders had been tipped off and fled. Now we turn to the dark side, the rebel alliance against the government in the Northwest Rebellion. First of all, let's look at the weapons. We had a Gatling gun. Oh, versus Métis rifles and rifle pits. The Métis would hide in their pits with their rifles and they'd shoot the white settlers and the white army and, in fact, win in many times. But let's take a look at the location. Most of this happened in a town called Batoche. Then, after the rebellion, Louis Riel was captured and we saw the trial of the century. Now, the trial has three main points. Number one, the crime was treason. Number two, Louis Riel's defense team claimed he was insane and thus could not have done what he did in good faith with mens rea. Number three, the result was, well, let's play a game of hangman. The word starts with L and ends in Louis Riel. If you got the answer right, he's killed. Riel thanked the court for finding him sane because he wanted to fight for the rights of his people and his cause on November the 16th, 1885, he was hanged. And people were happy, and then they were sad, and some were happy, and some were sad, depending if you were from Ontario or Quebec. But ultimately, if history was a game of hangman, Louis Riel got game over. <laughs>